Welcome to Canon Conversation number 678. We've uh, got a different route this morning, a little different. Anyway, uh, question today, what is the meaning and purpose of Jesus' temptations? I think a lot of times the problem with churchianity is they look at Jesus as being God. And so then they say, well, you know, he's God and the Bible says God cannot be tempted uh, as man is tempted. I mean, to be tempted, it's got to it's got to be something attractive to you. You know, if you told me, well, if you uh, work today for eight hours at your job, I'll give you a box of weeds. You know, that's not a t we box of weeds isn't a temptation for me. Um, you know, what am I going to do with that? So, same thing with sin with God. You tell God, well, you sin, you get this pleasure. He's, well, I already got better pleasures than that being God. Um, I have all, I own everything. Well, what are you going to tempt me with, you know? <laughs> so, uh, God can't be tempted with sin. And churchianity looks at Jesus as God. So then they say, well, you know, how could he be tempted? Well, the fact that we he was tempted, the Bible says in Luke chapter 4, he was tempted of the devil 40 days and 40 nights. So, you know right away then that Jesus, yes, he is fully God. I'm not denying that. But Jesus is also fully man. Because one thing about man is we can't be tempted. And one of the temptations that Satan gave him was bow yourself down. He says, all the kingdoms of the world I own. And I will give you if you bow down and worship me. 2 Corinthians 4.2 says that Satan is the god of this world. He got the kingdoms of this world when uh, Adam sinned. Adam was in charge of the earth. God put him in charge. He sinned. So now Satan, he succumbed to Satan's temptation. And so now Satan is the god of this world. He owns the kingdoms of the world. Now, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ gets them back through his death, burial, and resurrection. But Satan says, I got an easier way. The Father wants you to do, go to a cross and die and then go down to hell and suffer for your for the sins of people. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Just bow down and make me God instead of the Father. Recognize me as God, Satan says, instead of God the Father, and uh, I'll give you all these things. So it was a temptation to him. Well, the, the purpose, the meaning of the temptation, first off, is that he's fully man and he could be tempted. Um, another reason for the temptations is Hebrews 4.15 says he was tempted uh, or uh, it says uh, he uh, he is touched uh, we do we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities for he was tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin so um, tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. So one of the reasons is right there, Hebrews 4, 15, he's touched by the feeling of our infirmity. Romans 8 talks about how we can pray, crying, Abba, Father. The time that Jesus Christ cried, Abba, Father, Mark is the only one that records it, but it's in the garden. It's his greatest. In fact, they'll call it the temptation of Christ. You'll hear people talk about that, where he's in the garden. Luke says he sweat as it were great drops of blood, saying, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So, you know, he was tempted 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness um, with Satan there in Luke 4, Matthew 4. But the greatest temptation, and he overcame those with Scripture, but the greatest temptation he faced was going to the cross because... Ephesians 5.29 says, No man yet ever hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it. And Jesus was fully man, so he nourished and cherished his own flesh as well. But yet, he says, I'm willing to die, suffer the worst possible torture and death anyone could ever suffer. I'm willing to die, not just a physical death, but a soul death taken upon himself, our sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He was made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So Christ was willing to take that sin, bear it on the cross and in hell, and uh, 
you know, he had to, it was such a great temptation that he had to sweat, as it were, great drops of blood, literally blood coming down out of his pores into, uh, you know, off his face here, on his face, uh, struggling over the temptation. And so, when I sin, we all sin after we're saved, when I sin, we're told in Romans 8 that we have that uh, intermediary that the Spirit intercedes for us and I believe it's the Spirit of Christ there in Romans 8 with groanings which cannot be uttered Romans 8 26 27 he intercedes for us he is um, going to the Father for us on our behalf when we sin we cry Abba Father just like Jesus did it's like the only relief from this sin comes from the Father, or I should say from the temptation, comes from the Father. And we cry, Abba, Father. And we, uh, see, if I just went to God the Father on my own, uh, God the Father can't relate to the temptation of sin. Just like I said, He's got everything. Sin doesn't tempt Him. If you were struggling with there's a box of weeds here dead flowers box of weeds sitting here uh, and you really struggle with that you really want that and for me I look at it and say I can't relate to that I can't relate to why that's such a temptation because to me that box of weeds is worthless I, I don't understand why you would be tempted by that uh, you know that's how God the Father is when it comes to sin sin that's worthless I have all these great things uh, God is love, he says. I have all this. I have love. I don't have any sin. I have holiness. Uh, sin doesn't tempt me at all. So God the Father cannot understand why we would be tempted by sin, especially when we have all things in Christ. We're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We've got all these wonderful things. How could we be tempted by sin? God the Father does not relate. He can't relate to that. But um, the Son can so that's the first reason why he suffered the, the, the temptations was because so that now when I pray or my spirit cries Abba Father when I sin uh, Jesus Christ has interceded on my behalf already to the Father all that sin has been paid for it's covered and he is doing everything he can to help me grow to come into the knowledge of the truth and to allow Christ to live in me and he is touched with the feeling of our infirmities because he was tempted too, yet without sin. Tempted in all points, that's another meaning of it. Um, Jesus wasn't tempted with internet pornography, didn't exist. You know, there are some sins that you could do today that you couldn't do back then because it didn't exist. But 1 John 2, about verse 16 says, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Although there are certain sins that Jesus was not tempted with because they didn't exist, what did exist were the three categories. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. And of course, I don't have the scripture in front of me to show you, but you read Genesis 3 and you see how Eve was tempted. She was tempted with lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. And the reason there are three temptations listed in Matthew 4 and in Luke 4 he was tempted for 40 days and nights by the devil. But yet Matthew and Luke list the same three temptations. Was it just those three temptations the whole time? Probably not. There were probably other ones. But it was the really you only need to know about those three because those three cover lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. And that's why Hebrews 4 says he was tempted on all points like as we are yet without sin. So he's not, he that the specific details of our temptations aren't the same. You know, I could be tempta tempted to watch a, um, NFL football on Sunday instead of uh, teaching my Bible study. You know, that would be a sin for me if I did that because um, I've got a commitment to teach that study. And, uh, and so if I did, broke that commitment, it would be a sin for me. Um, so I could be tempted to turn over to NFL football rather than doing my Bible study. Um, 
Jesus didn't have NFL football. <laughs> he didn't have to worry about that. But he had other things. And he was still tempted by lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. So that's another reason for the temptations is, and this is the biggest reason really, the reason why, the biggest reason why Jesus was tempted is because that's the only way he could be our kinsman redeemer. That's why he's born of a virgin. If God, it says God commended his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It had to be a substitutionary sacrifice. He is the propitiation or fully satisfying sacrifice for our sins. His sacrifice is once for all. In the Old Testament, there were animal sacrifices. And according to Hebrews 9, 14 or 15, it says that the, uh, the animal sacrifices purified the sins of the flesh. It didn't purify their soul. It says they, uh, the Hebrews 10, I think around verse 4, said the blood of bulls and goats is not sufficient to cover for sins. So it only purified their flesh. They can now have a, their flesh could communicate with God through the Levites, but Israel could, but their soul was still unclean due to their unbelief. So if it, it wasn't possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away our sins. Why is that? Because it's not a substitutionary sacrifice. The wages of sin is death, which means our soul has to die. And an animal does not have the soul of a human. An animal may do things it shouldn't do, but it's just operating on instinct. It's not, it's not like us where we have a conscience, where we know right from wrong, and we make the choice to disobey. Uh, you look at all the sexual sins that people do. Uh, they don't have to do those things. They can make a choice to not, to not commit adultery, to not have premarital sex, to not do those things like that. They can make that choice. Animals, you notice them, um, a lot of times they're not interested in sex. But when it comes to the time for mating season, they, that's all they can think about. Well, it's not them saying, hey, I want to cheat on my on the uh, dough that I've been sleeping with. No, it's it's just that they operate on instinct. But humans make choices. And when you make the choice, Romans 14, 23 says, whatsoever is not a faith is sin. So when I make the choice to not operate in the faith of Christ, and then I sin, well now my soul has died. Wages of sin is death in hell. And so somebody, the justice of God, demands that a human soul pay for that sin. That's why Isaiah 53.10 says, Isaiah 53.10, that Jesus, that his soul was made an offering for sin. It's not just his physical body on the cross, but his soul was made an offering for sin, and he had to do that in hell. Psalm 16.10, Thou shalt not leave my soul in hell, neither shall I suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So a soul is made an offering for sin in hell, uh, and so then he, he died for our sins. And of course, the justice of God says he won't suffer corruption. He says that's the fully satisfying sacrifice. He overcomes death. Re Revelation 1.18 says that Jesus has the keys of hell and death in his hands. He, uh, he conquered it. So that's why he rose from the dead. That's why the resurrection is so important. If all Jesus did was die on a cross and he remained dead, we have no life in him. But the fact that his, his soul was able to make the substitutionary death for our, pay for our sins fully, and then he rose from the dead, means that now we have life in him when we are baptized into his death, the dry baptism uh, by the Spirit into his death, burial, and resurrection, the moment that we recognize our sin and trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for our sin. So we have that opportunity then to be saved only through the death of Jesus Christ. If I kill a lamb, um, it can atone for my sins. Only the flesh, but not the soul. Because it doesn't have the choice and the temptations like a human does. So it has to be a like type substitutionary death. That's why, because if it wasn't, if, if God could just, you know, God can do anything. Oh, well, I shouldn't say anything. Titus 1-2 says he cannot lie. So God has established rules, and he can't go against his own character, and he can't go be unrighteous. And it would be an unrighteous thing 
for God to not send his son and just to say, uh, once Eric believes that I have taken away his sin, then his sin is taken away. And because I'm God, I say so. You know, parents do that. You know, the kid says, well, why do I do that? Because I say so. You know, God doesn't do that. <laughs> God, God's just, God always does the right thing. He's always going by the rules. He says, the justice, my justice requires that a, a death, a soul death be be made for sin and so I can't just snap my fingers and say Eric's sins are forgiven I have to send my son as a man fully man he has to be tempted like a man or else he's not fully man because God isn't tempted so uh, with sin so he has to be man in order to be tempted and then the only way his death atones for my sin is if he overcomes the temptation 1 Peter 2.22 says Christ did no sin. And that's the key. He's tempted by sin, Hebrews 4 tells us. And in 1 Peter 2 says he did no sin. So then he can become sin for us, First, uh, first 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 20, 21. He can become sin for us, pay for our sins, overcome sin, and then we are the righteousness of God in him. So that right there is the main reason for the temptations. And people don't understand that. Because they, churchianity as a whole, thinks of Jesus as God. And he is God. I'm not trying to take away his deity. But they don't think of his humanity. So the temptation doesn't make sense if he's fully God but not fully man. But when you understand he had to be tempted in all points like as we are, so he would be fully man. He's not tempted in all points. He's not fully man. And uh, and then he does it without sin. So now his death atones for our sins, whereas a, the blood of a lamb couldn't do it. It can cover the, f the flesh, but it can't cover soul. Your soul still had to pay for its sin. So Jesus Christ made that payment for us. And another point I mentioned when we first started in Luke 4 that he was tempted 40 days and 40 nights and in your Bible 40 is the number of probation you had um, the flood it rained and Noah's day for 40 days 40 nights Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days Israel was in the wilderness 40 years Several other times in your Bible, you've got 40 appearing. It's the number of probation. That's how God tests man. It's through a, a 40 period. People will say, I don't know if you've heard it, but if you have a habit, let's say you drink a, a glass of wine every time when you eat dinner and you decide you don't want to do that anymore. Uh, or it doesn't matter what it is, good or bad, a habit. Uh, going to work. Let's say you stop going to work because of COVID and now you're getting back into it. Um, it's hard, it's hard to get back when you when you first go back. Or, you know, going to school, you're out of school for three months in the summer. It's hard to get back in the swing of things. They say it takes about six weeks for you to get back into something like that. Good or bad, doesn't matter. It takes about six weeks for a habit to be established. Six weeks is 42 days. Really what it is, is probably 40 days. It takes about 40 days. For some reason, 40 is that number of probation in your Bible. It's the testing period. And I believe, personally, Jesus was in the wilderness 40 days. We know that. He was tempted by the devil 40 days. Uh, Israel was in the wilderness 40 years. Personally, I believe that if they believed God, it would have been a 40-day journey. That was the plan. But because they didn't believe God, they were sentenced to 40 years one year for each day that they didn't have faith in God. Just like uh, God gave a 70 year Babylonian captivity, uh, one year for each Sabbath that they did not, uh, Sabbath year they did not um, withhold. Uh, a day with the Lord is as uh, a thousand years, but that doesn't really apply here. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> but, uh, a day, I could see 40 years punishment versus 40 days of unbelief. And so I think Israel was supposed to be in that wilderness 40 days, overcome temptation, and they would go in the promised land. Uh, since they didn't do that, Jesus had to do that for them. So I think that's why it was, he was 40 days in the wilderness, number of probation, tempted by the devil 40 days, 
and uh, yet without sin. Um, so, meaning and purpose of the temptations, he can feel our infirmities. And so he's touched and he helps us uh, overcome those things by interceding with the Father. And then um, the main purpose is he had to be tempted with sin or else he's not fully man. And he had to overcome it then so we may have uh, life in him. And uh, 40 days of temptations because that would be um, number of probation. And he did that for Israel because they should have been in the wilderness 40 days. All right, thanks for watching.